welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. I hope everyone is doing well out there. It's been a while since I've done any sort of tutorial. Uh, so what I have for you today is a widget that we are going to make out of 316 stainless steel. So for the interesting features, if you'll notice on the outside of the center bore, uh, we have a slot that is an eighth of an inch wide that goes all the way around, uh, sort of to mimic an O-ring groove. And then we have four holes that are tapped a quarter 20 on the outside edges of the part and then we have a fillet that has a 50 thousandths radius going around the edges of the part just so that we can do some 3d machining uh, there's nothing going on at all on the back and so what i figured i would do since it's been a while is we'll go over how my setup has changed what i'm doing differently some of the in-process probing routines and then we'll do some probing routines to measure the outside of the part and then the inside of the bore at the end of op one. And then we'll move into op two. We'll get to see some machining, some probing the whole nine yards. Hopefully it will be interesting and you can uh, sort of see my setup as I have uh, evolved over the time. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here I have my fifth axis rock lock base. This is what I currently have on my Silex 7. It's helped me in terms of transitioning from a hobbyist into more of a business uh, type role where I am more agile. So I can throw on a vacuum fixture, a vise, a three jaw chuck, etc. cetera, uh, very quickly by just unloosening the base and then retightening it and putting whatever fixture I need in there. And I think what I'll eventually do is make a video where I go through the various fixtures and how I use them. I think that would be very helpful, especially if you are just, you know, starting your adventure into CNC machining. So what you'll notice on top of the rock lock base, let me just highlight it. I have a sketch and in that sketch, I have three positions labeled my G57, my G58 and my G59. I have those saved in my LNC controller and the center point of each of these three uh, positions is on that sketch. And that is the exact position that is saved in my LNC controller. And so that's what we'll use later when we start our cam setups. And you'll see how we need to use that for in process probing and etc. <clears throat> so with that being said, how do we find those positions? So I'll add a video here to the right. It's very easy. I use a master palette from fifth axis and essentially you just go probe the center bore of that master palette for each position that will give you the x y center uh, for each position and again you simply probe move the palette probe move the palette probe again and then you touch off the top of your rock lock base and then you have your x y and z for each of those three positions so again i have fifth axis you may have ling or some other uh, type of zero point system, but this is how I have everything set up. And normally what I do, and we'll see here in a second, as we jump to a template is I have a template for each of my uh, various fixtures set up to go on top of the rock lock so I can model everything uh, for a cam. So let's jump to an example of one of those templates and we will be using this as we machine our widget. So you notice in my G57 position, I have a vise uh, with serrated jaws, and that is what I would use for op one. And then I have a vise in G59 uh, that I would use for op two, and that is either gonna have a set of soft, soft jaws, or so shown here is just a set of step jaws that have a quarter inch step. And this again is a generic template. So you'll see up here at the top, I have a silver CNC template for steel. I call it the silver CNC template because these are my silver CNC vices, uh, good vices, by the way. <clears throat> and so in that template, I have just various operations that I uh, would use, you know, when I'm making any part. So just a generic set, I would probe, I would face, I would do an adaptive clearing contour drill chamfer thread and then a, th a 3d blend here if i was going to do a fillet and so what i do is i copy this template into a new project when i'm going to make a new part and then i just simply delete and change uh, the model that is in here so if i go back to design 
you'll notice I just have a template model. So I will just delete those, put the new model in, and then go ahead and do my cam uh, very quickly. And so that is what exactly what we have set up here for our stainless steel widget. And when I go to delete and insert the new part that I am going to make, let's go here into the design view. All that I do is I come in and I modify some parameters and those parameters really just adjust the size of the stock that I'm going to use to hold my part. And so what I will do is I will go ahead and let's see here. I'll go ahead and show you that. So if I turn on the body there, you can see my parametric stock and that is what I would select in the setup. So that's essentially it in terms of the setups. I have the template with the various fixtures for my rock lock base. I copy that into a new uh, project each time, delete the template model, insert the actual model, and then begin, begin CAM uh, with a set of operations already there and defined. So let me know what you guys think of that or if there are any other benefits or any other options that you use that could help speed up my process. I'm always open to suggestions. Leave your comments below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go to the manufacturing tab and we will jump into the design. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete the current setups I have. Uh, just so we can do it from scratch for those of you that are new to the channel or new to machining. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just right click and again, new setup. And so what I want to do now is I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to change this to op one. So that just gives our program a name when we post process. I'm also going to make sure that I am using G54 which is WCS offset one. So the next thing that I'm going to do is set up my stock. So I am going to go to from solid and then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to drop down in the model and we are going to go here and we are going to select the body of our parametric stock. And then what I'm also going to do is go ahead and make the parametric stock invisible so that it doesn't get in the way um, when I am trying to do various other operations. And in fact, I'm going to want to do a probing operation. So I'm going to leave it visible for now because I want to select the top of my stock as a geometry for the probe. So I got a little bit ahead of myself, but that's fine. So I will go ahead and leave it on. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is select our model. So I'm going to go select the model. I'm going to come over here to our first widget select it and then I'm going to go ahead and select all of the fixturing. So let's go ahead and do that. So what are we going to do here? We are going to select all of the components of our vise. We don't want to select our stock. We just want the components of our vise there. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and select the rock lock base. And then we also need to do the other vice. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So we have all of our fixturing selected. So that's the two vices and our rock lock base. So everything there looks fine. Uh, lastly, what we need to do is go ahead and select our WCS origin. And again, as I mentioned earlier, these are going to be the center points of the position that the vices are on on my rock lock. So in this case, it's going to be my G57. So what I'm going to do is come here, go to selected point, and then I am going to uh, select that G57. Now you can see that point through the vice. I know it's a little hard there, um, but I guess what I can do uh, to prove it to you, if I went ahead and made that vice invisible, you can see that there is my G57 location. So we're going to turn that back on and then we are going to click OK. And that is our setup for op one. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is right click again. We're going to go to new setup and this is going to be our setup for op two. So I'm going to go to the post process tab 
and I'm just gonna call this op2. And again, we are going to leave our WCS at one, which would be G54 for stock. We want from previous uh, operation, or from, sorry, from preceding setup, uh, which it should default to that with rest machining uh, selected. That way we continue with the stock that was left from op1. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do here is go into our setup. And again, we're going to do the same thing that we did for setup one. We're going to go ahead and select. Um, we'll start with selecting our WCS origin. So I'm going to go to selected point. And again, here, um, the vice is in the G59 position. So we're going to select that point um, on the sketch there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is select my model. So this is going to be the second widget. So there we go. And finally, we're gonna do the same thing we did on op one and select all of our fixturing. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead, let's expand this, select the vice jaws, select the vice body, and then I'm going to select the rock lock base. And finally, we're going to go into our second vice Right, we don't want to run into the other vice while we're using this vice. We need to make sure that we have uh, both vices selected as fixtures um, when we do the setups. So that should be everything. We're going to click OK. And now we have the two setups and you see that the stock um, does transition from one operation to the other, which is what we want it to do. All right, so with that being said, we're going to jump into our first operation and that is going to be a probing routine. All right, that wraps up our first video in the tutorial series. In the next video, we will go over all of the tool paths in OP1. Please leave any feedbacks or any comments that you may have in the comment section below. And don't forget to grab the Fusion 360 model from the video description. That way you can all follow along and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.